Hey guys, Nick here and this is my Linux experiment and in today's video I'd like to show you a few software I use to make those videos. So, as you might have noticed, I am not an expert by any means. I have only started to dabble in video editing since uh, February, I think. And uh, what well, has been two months, uh, two full months since I'm editing video, so I am not a professional at this. This is not my day job. Uh, this is actually something I do on the side for fun. And so I'd like to show you uh, the few, a few tools I use uh, day to day to make those videos. So, well, first of all, the video editor I'm using here is called PTV, P-I-T-I-V-I, -I -I, PTV. It's available in the repositories. Uh, no, that's not the one, that's the one. Uh, you can search for it in the App Center and you'll get it. But the thing to know is that the version in the repositories is pretty outdated uh, and it is a pretty uh, older version that crashes a lot. So the one I'm using is the Flatpak version available on the PTV website, which you can download and install with the Flatpak command. Uh, you can, of course, install Flatpak with a sudo apt install Flatpak uh, in here if you need to, because it is not uh, available by default on elementary. So you can do a sudo apt install Flatpak. And there you go. You install that, then you get the flat pack, and you get, and then you, you download the flat pack from the PTU website, and you tap, type flat pack install, and you get your file, and it's gonna install it. And the thing is, PTV is based on the, the GStreamer library, uh, which is a library for media, audio, and video play, which has a lot of codecs, codexes, codices. I don't know how you're supposed to say it, but it has a lot of video and media codecs. Uh, so it's basically baked into most Linux distributions and uh, well you can of course take advantage of this uh, with PTV. So how PTV works? Uh, you have to know it's more of an iMovie and uh, Windows Movie Maker clone than a well not clone but look-alike or, or at least the same set of functionalities than an Adobe Premiere or a Final Cut Pro uh, clone so it will be more limited. So what you can see is it's a multi-linear editor. So you've got your layers here, which are your tracks, on which you can put video, audio, or both. Uh, here it's my uh, Witcher video that I posted uh, last week, I think, and the edits I've made on it. So of course you've got your media library, so you can import everything you need to, uh, your video, audio files, etc. Uh, you can import by pressing plus, you can select things and uh, delete them, modify them, etc, etc. So, well, that's pretty standard fare. Uh, on the right you've got your player, so if I launch the video I was editing, I uh, just click play. There you go. So it plays right there. Of course everything is resizable to your tastes. Uh, I am always a weirdo about the size, I just want it to be right. And then in the middle, you've got your clip properties, transition properties, or uh, the ability to create titles. So you basically drag and drop your clips and your uh, and your video uh, video or audio files in here, and then you can trim them uh, by placing the little red band here, the little red track player. And you when you click uh, on split, it will cut your clip in two. If you select only one of them, it's go only gonna cut this one. And if you select the one on the bottom, it's gonna well, it's only gonna cut the ones you selected. If you click somewhere else, it's gonna cut everything under it. You can of course delete portions of clips. You can group them, and group them, copy and paste, of course, the standard fare here. You can obviously play in a little separate window. Uh, that's the basics. So once you've dragged and laid out your tracks, uh, you can, of course, create transitions between your layers. All you have to do is go, well, you can, of course, zoom in on the tracks. All you have to do is take one of the layers and drag it on top of the other one. So if I wanted to create a transition between this sequence and that one, I could just drag this one here, and the blue, uh, the blue segment is the transition. So of course now we can see it's uh, about uh, like 300, uh, 300 milliseconds, something like that. Uh, I've got the list of transitions I can apply. Uh, I can get a really small preview here, but it's a really small one, and you won't see it much here because the clips are too similar, so it's not going to show it. Uh, but you, you get your previews here, and you can select the, the transition type. Uh, you can, of course, uh, select something else. So if I wanted to do that, I can make it loop uh, with a uh, speed. I can reverse the direction if I don't like the way it's supposed to run. So that's the basics. That, that's your transitions between clips. Uh, then you have your 
effects. So what I did uh, on one of these, uh, of course, is the keyframes. So there you go. So here it is the video track up here and the audio track here, which is associated to my video track up there. And those points, this line is the volume. So you can create uh, key keyframes or key well, key sounds, I guess, for, a, for an audio track by just clicking on it and then it becomes draggable and it allows you to adjust the sound uh, how you want. So if I wanted this to be super loud at the beginning, I could do that or I could just lay it flat or I could make it go down, etc. Et so I've created a few, a few points so that my clips go up and down so the volume is pretty much as good as I can make it on this video. And uh, well, of course, you can select the same thing for a purely audio track. Uh, then you can apply effects. So you can go to the effect library and you've got your video effects and your audio effects. So video effects are here. There you go, all the video effects. So you got a lot of them. You get some filters, some grain, some aspect ratio, some filters. You get a burn effect, a chroma. You can play with the colors. You can crop stuff. Uh, you can smooth them. You can uh, apply some motion blur. Uh, you can apply some distortions that I did, uh, for example, uh, in one of those clips, if I can find it. In this one, you have some kind of distortion here to blur some, some things you don't want to be seen. You can rotate the video, correct the gamma, etc. There's a, a lot of stuff you can apply. Uh, of course, you have to think that it needs to be applied to a clip, so you need to cut, uh, split your clips uh, in order to be able to apply the uh, video transitions and effects that you want. Uh, then you've got your audio effects. The one I'm using the most is the volume effect. So when you've selected a clip, you see all the effects right there. You can, of course, transform it with uh, width, height, and uh, well, the position on the screen with X and Y, and your effects will be there. So uh, as a rule of thumb, I put generally the volume from the game or the computer to 0.2, which is uh, well, a fifth of the standard volume, and I put my uh, audio volume from the microphone up to 4, because my microphone is crappy, and to be able to hear me, I need to put it way up. So you will get your effects right here in the clip thingy. I have not doubled much in all the effects you can get, but you can get an echo, a filter to get some lows or highs adjusted. You can remove some silences from an audio stream. Uh, you can uh, oh, increase the video, the speed, the uh, play with the stereo, etc. So there's a few things. Uh, you can remove your voice as well from the sound. So if you, uh, I don't, if I had registered my voice uh, on this clip and on this clip as well, I could remove it from the video track to not get that weird echo. echo. And uh, well, that's, that's about it. You, you have a lot of them. Uh, that's really enough for most people. And of course, I can uh, layer videos on top of each other. So here, for example, I've got a title layered on top of my video. But if I wanted to put another video, for example, me on a webcam, I could put this video clip in my media library, drag it onto uh, this track or an upper track. So for example, I could drag it here. You see the little blue line here, which means that it's going to be layered on a new layer. Or I could just put it on a downward layer. And then, well, the video will be played by order, so of course it's going to replace that whole video because I'm going to layer another full-size video on top of it. But what I can do is click and resize. So if I just wanted my video to be played just in a corner, for example my webcam, I could just resize my video and put it right there uh, in the corner. So you could see my face while I'm playing or while I'm doing stuff. So that's something I plan on doing at some point. But for now, I'm not doing it yet. I'm not ready to show you my ugly mug as of now. Uh, so there you go for the basics of PTV. It's a pretty standard video editor, basically. It's really, really easy to use. Uh, it really integrates well with elementary OS, as you can see, the header bar and the buttons. Uh, you can rename your project there. I think I did not name that one, apparently. Uh, you've got your save button, you've got your option buttons for preferences, but they are really light. Uh, you can just adjust a few details about the timeline and uh, keyboard shortcuts. If those by default don't suit you, there's not much to see here uh, except for the rendering thingy. So you can select, of course, the folder, select the file name. Uh, you can play with the audio and video settings. By default, it's going to support all the codices, codexes, I, st I still don't know how to pronounce it, that GStreamer supports. So if you want to add some uh, video support, you can install some more GStreamer plugins. Uh, from the command line, it does work. sudo apt install. Uh, you can go to GStreamer. 
uh, you're gonna take version 1.0 because that's the one in the repositories as of now. You get plugins and you've got the list of plugins, so bad, uh, which are the protected, ugly, which are the really protected ones, and the good, which are the free, uh, free codecs. So then you select the format you want. I mostly export as a move video with as less compression as I can. Uh, when I play, I almost I always try to do a 60 FPS version. Uh, I use the X264 uh, encoding. And of course you get some advanced settings if you know what you're doing. I do not, so the only thing I do is modify the bitrate because uh, by default it is 2048 and I double it just in case. Uh, render times are okay. Uh, for this 10 minute video uh, of The Witcher, uh, the export took something like 20 to 25 minutes, which is, I think, pretty much standard fare with an i5, uh, i5 CPU from last generation. It could be, of course, way faster if I had a better CPU and if I tinkered a lot with the codex uh, and the thing I wanted to use, but uh, of course, uh, I do not know what I'm doing, so I don't play with those. Uh, it has the ability to generate proxy files, which is going to be converting unsupported uh, video or audio formats into supported ones. And you can use them to to uh, speed up uh, the rendering time, uh, or you can also also say uh, I don't want to. Uh, it's gonna have a better quality, but uh, you're gonna risk to lose your projects in the meantime. It's gonna it might fail at the end of the rendering because it does not support the codec well, and so it will fail. So I mostly never opt to render from them because uh, well, I almost never use unsupported formats except maybe move files, which are not that well scored. So there you go for your uh, little tour of PTV. This is not the only uh, video editing solution on the market for Linux. There is another one which has the preference of many people, uh, which is called Caden Live. Caden Live is a video editor, pretty similar to PTV, but a lot more powerful. There you go. It is a KDE based application. So it does not look native on elementary. It uh, has its own style. Uh, it looks pretty close, but nothing to tear your eyes out. And uh, well, it works pretty much the same. You've got your timelines here. You can play with the audio, video, you can lock track uh, so that they cannot move. You've got a gigantic library of effects and transitions. And when I mean gigantic, I mean this is a lot of effects from the audio channels, audio correction, fade in, fade out. You've got all your transitions here, which are, I think, a little less than, than on PTV, but well, they are pretty powerful as well. You get your project and clip monitor. It's basically a steroid version of PTV. It is also a little more stable because I have uh, encountered a few problems on PTV sometimes uh, when you use uh, move files or unsupported like uh, MPG files uh, to create your projects. You will sometimes encounter a crash. Obviously, PTV saves all the time in the background, so you will not lose any work if you saved at least once. And when it crashes, it allows you to save before it exits most of the time. So it will not you lose your work, but it can be pretty annoying to have a crash while you're trying to play something or, or render something. Rendering almost never crashes. It, it's gonna fail if you're using unsupported codexes, but it's never gonna crash. And uh, I hear that Caden Live is a little bit more stable, so I will be trying that out as well. And uh, maybe I'll uh, do a little video on how to use it as well once I've uh, come to grips with it. Uh, it is supposed to be a lot more powerful and a lot more stable, so I will be trying that out. But uh, as you can see in the menus, it does look like it has a lot more features with uh, markers on clips, which PTV does not support. Uh, it's got a spacer tool to, uh, to keep some space between your clips. Uh, you can extract the audio from some, from some tracks. Uh, you can transcode on the fly to some other formats, etc. etc. So there is a, a few more options here. And uh, as you can see, there are a lot of little windows you could show uh, to see the waveform of your sound, uh, to see a histogram for the colors, etc. So, well, basically, it's a, it's a really good editor, uh, probably on par with something like Lightworks, uh, which is also, as a matter of fact, available on Linux. Uh, so, well, if you want some free software, you've got Caden Live, you've got PTV. I'm going to close without saving because uh, I did some stupid stuff in here. And you've got uh, Lightworks, uh, which I have installed as well, which, which is a professional solution. Uh, it has been pretty buggy on my computer. Uh, there has been, see, uh, see what I mean? Uh, there's a few weird stuff and it does not work as well on my computer. If you move the window, sometimes it goes bad. Yet. I don't really know why. But uh, it's a really powerful one, it's used by uh, many movie studios as well. So it's, it is a good one, but I have not tried my hand at it because it is way buggy on my system. 
So there you go for this little tour. Uh, I will try and uh, include other software such as audio editing uh, tools and uh, graphics design tools, but no mystery here. It's GIMP and Inkscape on Linux. You don't have that much of a choice, except maybe for Krita, which is a nice painting program. Uh, so I'll, I'll try to do a little tour of other apps, but that is my uh, presentation of PTV. And uh, well, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.